Hello and welcome to the Scatterful channel and today the long-awaited Ryzen 7000 series CPUs have finally been unveiled and I was right. Do you guys remember that video I posted not too long ago rumoring about the potentially expensive future of PC gaming? Well let's talk about that and everything else you need to know about these new Ryzen 7000 series processors. So once again just like the Ryzen 5000 series launch the cheapest entry-level CPU from AMD to get into this new ecosystem, a part of these new Ryzen CPUs on the AM5 socket will cost you $300, that being the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is a six core 12 threaded CPU. Then there's the $400 Ryzen 7 7700X, that's an eight core 16 threaded CPU. Then there's the $550 Ryzen 9 7900X, that is 12 cores, 24 threads, and then topping out the lineup is a $700 Ryzen 9 7950X. So if we were to do the math and this one screenshot that AMD provided stating that their B650 motherboards will start at $125, a Ryzen 5 7600X is gonna cost you 300, plus a $125 B650 motherboard, which may not be all that good in the first place if it's like an ASRock HDV motherboard, plus a 16 gigabyte DDR5 RAM cape, which is gonna run anywhere from 80 to 100 bucks, will put you at about $500 to enter this new ecosystem from AMD. So yeah, that price is gonna be steep if you wanna get any of these new CPUs, motherboards, and DDR5 RAM. But if there's anything else to go by, AMD did put another slide in their presentation stating the objective performance of the 7600X versus the i9-12900K, aka Intel's top performing CPU, and it beat it. Admittedly, an F1 2022, which is very much a CPU-based benchmark game, but still, is that $300 7600X going to be faster than a $500 16 core i9 processor in most games maybe some that are gpu bound will it matter that much i don't know we'll have to see will the extra cost of getting that ddr5 ram and these new motherboards on the new am5 socket be worth it if the performance for games is that much greater that we'll just have to see once all the reviews come out which will be very exciting to see if you're looking to activate Windows on your current gaming PC, then look no farther than VIP SED key. Through using my discount code VIP Scatter, you can get a percentage off Windows 10 Home, Pro, and even Office 2016 keys. And taking one of those keys and say activating your gaming PC with one of those only takes a matter of seconds. And for the record, every single gaming PC build you've seen here on the Scatterable channel has been activated with one of those VIP SED key Windows keys and it's been smooth sailing. So if you wanna take advantage of the savings possible through VIP SED key for your software, then go ahead and check out the link in my discount code at the top of the description. Anyways, to go back to my thoughts on these new CPUs, if there was any standout CPU from this lineup that I'm most interested in taking a look at, that would have to be the Ryzen 7 7700X because versus the previous Ryzen 5000 launch, there is no 7800X in this launch. There's just the 7700X, which actually has a lower MSRP versus the original 5800X, yet it's running at the same TDP of 105 watts. It's an eight core 16 threaded CPU that can turbo boost up to 5.4 gigahertz, which is more than any mortal would ever require for a gaming PC. And again, it costs $400. And I don't see the need to go to a crazy top of the line 7900X or 7950X because those will require a lot more wattage and the extra performance you could gain may not be worth it for the power draw that you're requiring to power those monster CPUs. So I think the 7700X could be the sweet spot in this lineup of CPUs. Now let's get back to the budget realm and stop kind of drooling over specifications. Why is AMD not releasing any affordable Ryzen 7000 CPUs a part of this launch, like their original Ryzen 1000 launch and Ryzen 3000 launch? Well, as we saw with the Ryzen 5600 and 5500 earlier this summer, if those chips released at the same time as the other Ryzen 5000 chips way back in 2020, 
there would be no need to buy a 5600X and there probably wouldn't be a need to get a 5800X because the realistic gaming performance of the Ryzen 5 5600 was really good for the money. And for most use cases, it was perfectly fine for a lot of gamers. But, you know, just to make the most amount of profit margins for these new CPUs, of course, AMD is gonna withhold those lower end CPUs and just give us the mid to higher end CPUs to make a lot of money, which in terms of business, you're gonna have to do that, obviously, given all the research and development AMD poured into engineering these new chips. But that is a little bit of a disappointment for all of us budget PC gamers looking to enter this new ecosystem from AMD on a budget. And when those new budget CPUs, like a hypothetical Ryzen 5 7600, 7500, or a Ryzen 3 7100, it feels awkward to say Ryzen 3, because I feel like AMD hasn't been doing it any justice lately. But if any of those chips were to come out, hopefully they come out sooner rather than waiting a year and a half. <laughs> so that's my only optimistic thought. Otherwise, we're gonna be stuck with the 7600X and up with all the more expensive B650, X670, and DDR5 RAM kits. Other than that though, I think this launch was a pretty big success for AMD because it looks like they're hitting all the points they need to to make these new lineup of CPUs successful. And one of the things that initially kind of drawed me back was the fact that even though AMD touted a lot about the efficiency gains while keeping the power and performance high with these new Ryzen 7000 CPUs, the TDPs are still higher than last generation, despite the five nanometer architecture and supposed more efficiency that AMD is bringing to the table. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see what Intel does in response to this because of the fierce competition they've had. So with Intel right now, I'm not hearing that much about efficiency gains. So maybe Intel can match AMD in terms of performance this generation, but it'll come at a huge power wattage and heat cost that these new Ryzen chips may not have to suffer with. So it'll be interesting to see. And once again, I think that 7700X is a very sensible choice if you're considering upgrading to these new CPUs. Anything beyond that is just ludicrous. Anyways though, that is pretty much all I gotta say for my initial thoughts on these new Ryzen 7000 CPUs. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on them, hopefully. I don't know if I'll get review samples. I probably won't because I haven't really been uploading much, but I'll shoot my shot with the agency that runs those reviews with those AMD chips and see where we get. But even if I don't get any, I expect maybe at least a 7600X in the studio here because I do wanna get my hands on these new chips and see how much faster they are versus the older generation being on DDR5 and these new motherboards. It's all gonna be very exciting to see. So if you enjoyed my rambling, you might wanna consider subscribing and liking this video. That would be very appreciated amongst all the other Ryzen 7000 content that's been plaguing your recommendations and inboxes. But yeah, other than that though, again, thank you a lot for watching and this is the Scatterbolt channel signing out.